Hey guys, the Swamp Fox blade is a 1x prism sight with a unique bullet rise compensating reticle. Now there's a lot in that one little sentence that I ought to unpack, but before we jump into that, we'd like to thank our video sponsor TNVC. If you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff, take a look at our sponsor TNVC.com, your source for quality night vision gear to make you the bump in the night. Okay, let's jump right in. 1x or 1 power means 1 times magnification. That is, you see the image at 1 times its actual size. In other words, when you hear 1x, think no magnification. A prism sight is just what it sounds like. It has a prism inside like those used in many binoculars and ACOG sights. That generally also means that the reticle is physically etched onto the glass inside rather than being a reflection of an LED or a holograph. And what that means is that the reticle will always be visible whether or not the sight is turned on, and people with astigmatism should be able to see it clearly. The downside to an etched reticle is it is usually difficult to illuminate as brightly as a reflex or holographic sight, but the reticle in this blade is surprisingly bright. Daylight bright means different things to different people, but to my eye, this reticle is bright enough that it is clearly visible in bright sunlight against light-colored backgrounds like a sandy berm. Because it is a prism sight, it doesn't have unlimited eye relief like a traditional red dot, but the eye box is still pretty generous. If you have to shoot from a compromised position like rollover prone, it might be just a little bit slower or more difficult to get your neck around to get a sight picture than it would be with a red dot, but everything has an advantage and a disadvantage. On the one hand, you get an intrinsically robust design that you can count on even in the EMP after the Battle of Anchorage, and it's forgiving of eye conditions. On the other hand, it's maybe not quite as flexible as a red dot at close range. But all of that applies to any other 1x prism, more or less. Most of those other prism sites are intended to be an in intermediate range site with close range capability. The primary arms Cyclops, the Trijicon TA-44, are both available with a bullet drop compensating reticle. You zero at 100 yards, and you have a few aiming points for targets at 200, 300, etc. But because of the distance between the center of the bore and the center of the sight, your actual point of impact will be somewhat low at every distance between zero and 100 yards with that type of zero. Of course, the max difference in POI occurs right at the muzzle and is literally just that distance between the bore and the sight. It's called height over bore. In this case, and in the case of most sights on an AR, that's about two and a half inches. Obviously, that's a small enough difference that you're still getting hits on a torso at any intermediate distance, so it doesn't matter much for most applications. For inside the room distance, you just aim about two inches high and press the trigger. For a brain shot, you aim at the crown of the head and the bullet will be close enough to the medulla oblongata to get instant incapacitation. However, if you start with the assumption that you will be far more likely to use this sight at close range, say, if this is for a home defense rifle or a patrol carbine, then you could approach the problem quite a bit differently. You could design a reticle that has precise aiming points for specific distances between 0 and 50 yards. If you do have to take a shot at longer range, the POI will be a little high until it crosses 200 and about 4 inches low at 250 if you're shooting 5.56. Now, most of that wouldn't matter in a fight. Odds are you'll roughly just frame the bad guy's chest in the circle and slap that trigger because any quick hit is a good hit, especially if it's a lot of them in generally the right place. And at any distance from contact to 250 yards, holding center is enough to get a hit on the torso. But occasionally, a bad guy will expose only a small portion of their body, and as unlikely a scenario as the Keanu Reeves thing is, it is a possibility. But homeowners and police officers may have to shoot just an ankle or elbow sticking out from cover also. Or someone might need to euthanize a dangerous animal while minimizing risk to himself and others. Or maybe you just want to clean that plate rack at 20 yards like a boss. For whatever reason, the bullet rise compensator in the blade provides precise aiming points at 5, 10, and 15 yards, as well as the center arrow reticle zeroed at 50 yards. What's also kind of neat about this is that bullet rise is more or less the same for any caliber. A bullet drop compensator reticle needs to be correct for a given caliber, but this reticle is the same whether you're using 22 or 300 Win Mag. 
Still, subtensions are given in the manual for various measurements on the reticle, so you could conceivably use it for longer distance ranging and BDC if you were inclined to do the math, but that's not really the primary purpose of this sight. Now, starting at the rear of the sight, we have an adjustable diopter to adjust to your own eye, then the power and brightness control buttons on top. There are 10 levels, including two night vision compatible settings. The manufacturer lists a max battery life of 3,000 hours, which is about four months of constant on, but that's probably on the lowest setting. I can't really tell you how long it'll last on the highest setting because it also has an auto off feature that turns it off after about four minutes of sitting still. If it weren't for that motion sensing feature, that might get annoying turning off all the time, but it turns itself on instantly whenever you touch it. So that feature is perfect for a homeowner because you can just set it and forget it, knowing it will be activated at just the right brightness the second you pick it up. It would probably last for at least a decade while powered off, and these lithium batteries have crazy long shelf life. But just to give myself warm fuzzies, I'd probably change the batteries once or twice a year when I'm changing my smoke detector batteries and not setting my clocks back because I live in Arizona. If this sight is on a patrol rifle though, you'll want to manually turn it off when you stow it in your vehicle for your shift. If you hold the down arrow for a few seconds, it turns off and it doesn't wake up again until you press the up arrow. Now whether it wakes up by a button press or by motion, it turns on at the last brightness level that it was used at. The windage and elevation adjustment screws require a tool, but there's a handy tool built right into the caps and you could just use a cartridge rim to adjust. As long as you have ammo to zero with, you'll be able to make adjustments, so it's not like it matters much. Now, I prefer finger adjustable capped turrets, but that's a pretty subjective thing and might increase the cost. Each click is one half minute, and although these clicks are a little soft, they are distinct enough to make your adjustments. It's not like you're gonna be dialing your dope on these anyway. Once you're zeroed, you're done messing with them. So again, it isn't important enough for me to be willing to pay more for the site. Now ultimately, that's kind of the point of this site anyway. It's not a budget site in the sense of being low quality, but it is very utilitarian and it's obvious that choices were made to favor functionality, durability, and cost so that the widest range of LEOs and armed homeowners could afford to, park, to buy one. It's a no frills site and a lot of what matters and a little of what doesn't. When I talked to product marketing director Mike Branson at SHOT this year, he expressed that this site was designed specifically for law enforcement officers using their feedback. Mama gives you what you want, but daddy gives you what you need. It comes with a kill flash style anti-reflection thingy and lens caps that have a positive detent to hold them in the open position. The compartment for the CR123 battery is just a little tricky to manage while the sight is mounted if you have stubby little peck fingers like mine, but if you use both hands, thusly, it's pretty manageable. Or you can use the tool built into the windage adjustment cap. Now, I didn't want to abuse this site too harshly because it's going to be part of a giveaway, but I did soak it in my rain barrel for a few days and it kept on trucking. Now, I'll leave it to whoever gets it to beat it up, but it feels solidly built and I think it's probably pretty tough. So what do I think? It's a compact, functional site that's well suited to home defense and law enforcement. I particularly like the combination of shake awake with an etched reticle. The pointed, arrow-shaped main reticle allows for a precise hold while the big ring is quick up close. If your primary concern is being able to be firstest with the mostest at less than 100 yards, this site will definitely meet that requirement really well. And let's keep things in perspective. The average civilian, whether or not he wears a badge, is rarely going to be able to articulate a reasonable need to use deadly physical force at more than 10 yards, let alone 100 yards. And if you are interested in that intermediate range for the Boog or fighting best Koreans, you can still reliably engage human-sized targets out to 250 yards without any site corrections using a 50-yard battle site zero, just as you could with any other site. So to be honest, even battlefield firefights rarely get past that distance, which is why the M68 CCO is so widely deployed. By skipping the bullet drop compensating features in some other reticles, the blade gains a lot of capability up close where you are far more likely to need it. I would have 
No hesitation to include this on a home defense rifle, patrol carbine, or competition gun, or your Pocalypse blaster. I usually try to find at least one positive and at least one negative thing about everything I review, and I'm struggling to identify anything about this site that I don't like. The reticle is a little thick, which kind of has a cheap look to it at first glance, but that's an intentional design choice to make it boldly stand out. Now, in comparison, the Trigicon TA-44 and Primary Arms Cyclops both have finer reticles, but they don't stand out quite so boldly. More importantly, the reticle is sharp and well-defined. The glass is quite clear, light transmission is outstanding, and illumination is bright enough to really grab your attention. I guess if I had my druthers, the integral mount would be QD instead of these kind of screw things, but that would increase cost. And if they'd gone with a standard pattern mount like a T1 or what, whatever, it would probably also increase cost as well as adding height and weight. Again, it's a solid decision in the context of intended use. After all, the reason I want a QD mount on all of my optics isn't fear that they'll break or that batteries will die, it's that if the lens gets covered in mud, blood, gravy, or whatever, you can't see through it. In that case, you could remove a sight with a QD mount and get back into the fight. But in the context of home defense, that problem is a lot less likely, and it's even more unlikely that you would have the opportunity to correct the problem before the fight's over. You're just going to run what you brung to that spitting distance gun battle and adapt or die. So, I mean, I can't really come up with anything substantive that I don't like about this site. Should you buy one, though? As always, you're the only one who can decide whether this product meets your unique needs, but I hope I've given you the information that you need to make that decision. If you like seeing content like this, please be sure to support all the GunTuber channels by engaging with content that you like. When you like, share, comment, and subscribe on this video or any other gun-related video, you guide the YouTube algorithms to show you more gun-related content. If you'd like to support us more directly, take a look at some of these rad shirts in our Teespring store. And of course, please support our sponsors who support us. In this case, TNVC brings you all the things that you need to be the bump in the night. I love you.